So this was supposed to be the part two video about the Tech House bass, but for some reason my software didn't capture the sound. I'm pretty pissed. So I'm re-recording this video. Um, so no fancy intro. This video is going to be all about Tech House bass automation. I'll try to share uh, all the latest techniques and strategies that I learned by producing those bass lines that I showed you uh, in the video number one. If you haven't watched the first one, then uh, click the link some, somewhere here. I'll put it here. It's a really cool one. You will learn a lot about the foundation of Tech House bass, how to write melodies, how to use uh, different filters, velocity programming, all that's really needed. So I recommend and checking out the first one uh, first and then watching this video. Uh, but other than that, if you're interested in coaching, if you want to work one-on-one -on -one with me on your music, all the links are down below. So let's not do <laughs> any fancy intro. Let's just uh, go straight into the video and into the presentation. So uh, let me open up my presentation and we will talk about the Tech House Bass Automation. So we will be working with um, uh, the same bass lines uh, like, like we did. So let's talk about Tech House Bass Automation. So this diagram uh, represents the logic really, really well. So what you want to achieve in your Tech House Basses is going to be some movement, right? So you want to automate parameters over time, right? So that's <laughs> really it, that's really it. And we can automate different parameters like filter, ADSR, uh, some FX, pitch, width, space. So I'm just gonna be going um, one one by one, showing you some uh, techniques that I used in um, those bass lines. So let's check the first one and we will try to uh, learn something from um, this baseline. So let's see what kind of automation I'm using. And then we're just gonna start, you know, with uh, some basics, right? So first one is always filter. That's the easiest one to automate, right? That's kind of basic. So we can automate the filter like, you know, maybe, maybe like this. It's kind of easy, right? That's the most simple type of automation that you can do overall. Uh, but this filter is not really the one that benefits that much from uh, the filter automation. The one that sounds the best would be this one. So just listen to uh, how it sounds. Just listen to the filter. So I'm going to disable everything else. Just listen to the filter and then I'll be showing you more from from the uh, automations that that we have, so just just a filter for now. So you can see just by automating the automate. Uh, you can see just by automating the filter, you can do a lot. Uh, but this is just the first thing that you could automate. There's way, way, way more uh, to what we can do with this, right? So uh, let's talk a little bit about the um, uh, velocity, velocity modulation automation. This is like a really, really cool thing. Uh, one thing is that it's not gonna work with. Um, with everything, right? So with these kind of filters, it's not really gonna work that well, but you can see that I'm using velocity to detune the second oscillator, to uh, modulate the amount of distortion, to modulate the amount of EQ filters and so on. So let's just listen to how it sounds uh, before and after. Let's open the filters, it's more obvious. So we can play with the velocity and it's really one of my favorite parameters when it comes to automations. I'll just, you know, with, with my pen, I'll just draw something like this. And now we can compare that to something, something more simple. And then, 
So by using velocity, you can automate a lot of stuff. Well, like in, the, in this context, I would call it modulation because it's inside the synth, but really it, it, it doesn't matter that much. So uh, again, there's no right or wrong. I would just try using velocity, you know, on different parameters and see how uh, that affects your uh, baseline. So this is the first thing. Let's um, uh, talk about the next things. So we discussed so far the filter. Now I would like to focus on the uh, on the ADSR parameters, right? So this is also a really, really important thing. Uh, and let me show you, let me show you how that could affect your tech house baseline. So let's do the second one. And we could just, just gonna play a little bit with the, uh, with the envelope. So we have, uh, I'm just going to do this manually so we can we can see right let's put it uh, somewhere somewhere here so you can see how much the groove changes let's play with the drums right so the open hats and the the claps you can see how different the vibe is when I increase the sustain. I, I made a whole separate video about that, so I recommend checking it out as well. It's a really cool one. Covers in deep, like in depth, how to work with a DSR. But anyway. You can see how different one baseline could be depending on different parameters that you have uh, with your ADSR, right? So, so you can do a really sustained one. And same thing you can do to your second envelope, which usually will control the filter, right? So for example, if I make it really, really short like this, So your goal is to find such parameters for the ADSR so it works well with your baselines, right? So in this case, thankful for this one, we're just gonna use something standard like plucky. And then you can adjust that. Maybe you want to do a bit uh, of attack in the beginning, right? That's gonna change the... You can do, like, you can do so much with just... Just with uh, ADSR, right? That completely changes the, the game, right? So this is such a different vibe to the first one. And then you would obviously have to adjust. And then we can adjust the first envelope. So again, I'm exaggerating in that a little bit, but hopefully it gives you some uh, some ideas to work with your automation, right? So next thing next is we can use uh, ADSR to automate different parameters. So in this case, like the filter is gonna be the most obvious one, like the classic one, but there's more to that, right? So we can do... Uh, let's do let's do something like this. Decrease the sustain. And now uh, we can do things like this. So for example, we take the envelope two and we automate the detune amount. Or maybe this should be uh, the first one. So we can do. Maybe you don't want to do this much, so you, we can use the uh, third envelope and do something like something like this. So we just automate a little bit. 
Oh wait, 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 that that was that was the um, that was the wrong one. Because we already used it for um, uh, the pitch bit. But you, you get the point, right? So you can you can experiment with different parameters. It's not just going to be the velocity that you automate stuff with, not just the nodes, but also with the envelope. So you can. So you can either do this manually, how I did in the beginning, right? Or you can do this uh, with, with the envelope here. And then again, with the envelope, you can control the, let's say like that could be the distortion as well. Maybe you can automate the, um, uh, the gain on the, and give a nice top hint to your bass, right? So this is, It, it is really all about understanding and just trying things out, right? So I'm just always improvising really. So I don't have like a specific formula of like how I'm doing things. It's more like, hey, like, let me try this thing. If it works, it works. If not, okay, that's cool. So, uh, so far we talked about the uh, ADSR and the filter right now. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, FX pitch and the rest of the automation that you can do to your take house baseline. So let's take a look at the base and what I did here. So if you look at this baseline, let's just listen to the baseline one more time and then we'll break down the automation. So you can see that uh, a lot of movement is happening with the detuning, with the detuning thing here, right? So listen to this one. And that gives a lot of movement to, to your bass lines, right? So the most important thing that you have to understand is that we have um, specific sections or specific parts in our bass line. And your goal is to understand where you should automate. So in this case, we have, um, if you followed the previous video, um, so we have the main tonal phrase, right? Which is going to be the green one. And then we have the little red clip. So the red clip in this case is the variation, right? It's, it's, the, it's the variation of the baseline. So in this case, we can remove this one. And uh, you can see I'm also automating the amount of distortion. So take, take a listen. So distortion is also giving a lot. I'm going to increase the uh, dry wet. It changes the character, it changes the vibe of the track, right? And combined with other effects, that could give you, again, quite, quite a lot. And then uh, what else? I'm detuning the first and the second oscillator. We are tweaking the ADSR, the release again, super cool thing to do. Uh, and then, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Again, it doesn't have to be complicated. All you have to do really here is to decide what you automate or automate or, or modulate with different parameters. And that's pretty much going to be it. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about specifically uh, with this base is going to be the reverb and the delay automation. So we are not just automating the these parameters, right? You also want to automate the pitch, the width and the space. So we're going to talk about that. So we, we kind of touched upon the pitch with the detuning, but I'll show you a little bit more uh, with the next baseline. So we're going to talk about pitch, width and space. So for the space, all I did here is I just automated the base on the return channel. But you can already hear that uh, this reverb and delay, they give a lot to the bass line. So it sounds way more complex, way more interesting, you know, so experiment with that as well. That's, that's a really cool thing to do. So for me, it's really just all about trying. And to compare, I want to show you the dry bass line without any automation at all. So check this out. Let's try this one. Ah, 
actually it didn't copy but now let's check the automated one reactivate the automation so you can see how much more movement there is in your bass lines right just with super simple automation and again like this stuff may seem complicated but when you try it out like i, I can promise you spend like maybe like one two three hours just trying different settings different parameters and you will learn the automation right it's just really about the mindset it's not as much about the technique or something like that it, it is really not that complicated okay super simple okay so we talked about the uh, space spatial effects now i want to break down the base uh, number three so in this case the void is it okay so now i want to talk to, um okay so now i want to talk about the example number three so this is a really interesting base that i made for um one of the uh tutorials that i made like a couple weeks ago so uh let's talk about this base it's a really interesting one it's it is simple but at the same time it's really complex when it comes to the modulation inside the synthesizer itself You can see the bass, it is really like, it is alive. It is somewhat organic and it's, it's floating. Like it's, it's, it's moving a lot. So let's talk about that. So in this bass, there's a lot of modulation happening inside, which I want to talk about. So take a look at the, take a look at the stuff that is happening here. So I'm using velocity to control the cutoff. I'm using the velocity to control the uh, levels of different oscillators. So the sub, oscillator A, oscillator B. So let's go one by one. So what is happening here is going to be the first thing that we're going to be talking about. Okay, so I need to, not the notes, but I need to, where did I have envelope yeah so you can see we have pitch bent we have pitch bent and uh what i did here is i set it to minus 12 and plus 12 that means that we can go up uh to up to one octave with our modulation so by doing that we can do like we can do something like this or maybe, nah, I don't like it that much. So you can see this thing alone is already doing a lot to the baseline. So pitch bends, it's a really cool thing to do, super simple. Again, try it out. That's the first one. So we are automating the, the pitch bend and the filter at this point. Now let's talk about the second oscillator. So the second oscillator is, it is really wide. So this layer is giving a lot in terms of the width to the base, right? So if we... And I would balance that like this. So this is this is one thing, right? Uh, let's talk about... What do we have on, uh, on the matrix? Envelope 2 is controlling... Uh, also, if we talk about envelope 2, envelope 2 is controlling the filter a little bit. Not too much, but a little bit, so it helps with the movement in the track. Uh, what else? Uh, what else is happening here? So if you look at the um, uh, LFO2, so the LFO2 is controlling the, the EQ. And we are doing that in a very specific way, right? So I want to emphasize, I want to emphasize this, um, mode over here right so if we bypass all the um, uh bypass all destinations on the LFO you can see how much the sound changes right if I enable uh, activate and uh, activate it's like this 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 kind of sound 
Uh, also, LFOIL 1 is um, controlling the pitch, not just like the, the pitch bin that we are doing manually, but also the uh, the pitch of the second oscillator. So it's floating a little bit. It goes like, like a little bit like this. Right, you can see it goes back and forth, goes back and forth, and together with the bass line, you can see how much movement we have in this bass line. Okay, so what else do we have um, for our baseline here? Uh, I think I'm also automating the, the sustain. Yeah, so if you look at the amount of sustain, this is also a pretty interesting one. So I'm automating sustain in the way uh, that emphasizes the note here, right? So check this out. We're gonna delete it from here. So just, just do it. But now if I automate the sustain, you can see how much you can do with that. Again, it, like it, it is not really visual because it is not showing this one here, but I think Basically what is happening over time is on specific notes, we go like this, right? And by doing that again, we are playing with the ADSR. So in this baseline, I'm combining uh, everything. And also the velocity is controlling the, uh, the sub oscillator, the oscillator A loudness, oscillator B loudness, and so on, right? So this is what we can do uh, with with the uh, automation slash modulation, right? So again, um, try it out. There's no right or wrong. I'm just showing you like a bunch of stuff. You, you'll, you'll get the preset uh, so you can take a look at uh, what we did here. Uh, and uh, the last thing that I want to talk about, because we already pretty much talked about everything here, is going to be the uh, base layering. So when it comes to layering tech house base, and this is something that I did in uh, one of the previous videos I posted like a couple of months ago, but I want to really quickly uh, talk about that. So when it comes to layering, if you listen to this bass, uh, the first one, which I really, really like. Even just like this, it's sounding pretty cool. But what we can do more uh, is we can layer that a little bit. So if you look at this diagram, so there are a couple of ways how you can layer your bass lines. So in this case, if you have uh, the main note, you can layer an accent underneath the main one, or you can replace bass noise with the second layer. So I'm gonna be showing you uh, the technique here. So the first one is like the accent notes, right? So if you take a look at the uh, at the MIDI, the MIDI, the MIDI notes are the same pretty much everywhere. So I'm copying this one, I'm copying this one. So this bass uh, bass note, uh, it is more like if you if you see here, so it's it's an empty space. So it's more like I'm replacing the base with a new layer, right? So if the first two, it was something more like this, in this case, it is something more like, uh, like this one, right? So let's take a listen. Pretty cool, right? And then with the drums, Quite nice. And then we add one more sound to uh, to the bass. I, I just love this sound. Like it, it gives so much to the bass. So really, really important thing here. Try utilizing free space 
in between your loads here, right? So again, just, just as an example, I'm gonna put this one here and let's check out how it sounds. It just, just sounds good, right? So again, this one is, is really simple. All you have to do is to uh, take your base MIDI and then decide what kind of nodes and like where you want to layer your bass lines, right? So in this case, it's gonna be it's gonna be this one. I'll make a different color. So usually uh, it is going to be uh, little variations that you're gonna be layering, right? So we take this one, you see there's a bit of variation here. We can layer that. You can also layer the uh, first nodes as, as the downbeat accent. So it could be something like this, right? So this is, this could be the other layer, and then something uh, something in between here as well. So we could make this one, let's say green, or nah, let's make it white, right? So something which is utilizing the free space. So that's 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 gonna be it. I don't think it's really, it's really uh, worth spending too much time on that, but yeah, just take a look at your base MIDI, find little variations, and then I would layer anywhere from like one to five. I mean, you can do as many as you can, as long as it sounds good, it's good. But in this case, I think I do have, um, have like three or four, or four layers, but essentially I'm not really changing the, uh, the MIDI, the MIDI of the, of the bass that much, right? If I just listen with the, uh, with the instruments here. All these melodic elements, <laughs> I made them all from the uh, from the Tech House bass that, that we have here, right? So it's like super, super simple. And that's the way that I do my Tech House tracks right now. So I think, yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it for uh, the automation. And I think I'll do uh, one more video where I talk about my latest discoveries when it comes to uh, mixing Tech House bass lines, just so we could split that um into different categories of the video because otherwise the video is going to be too long okay guys so i hope that you enjoyed this video so again <laughs> no fancy intro as i was a little bit pissed about my software not capturing the sound but uh in the next video this week i will be talking about uh my latest techniques for mixing a cool tech house space so thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next one